Hello everyone, welcome to another little video. Uh, this is Reverend Martin here and uh, it's good to see you. Um, speaking to the young people at All Saints and across the East Clevedon Benefice and the young people at All Saints School as well. This Sunday is the Feast of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came uh, among the first Christians in a very dramatic way. And uh, it's a wonderful story. But I thought we'd think a little bit today about the idea of inspiration. The fact that the Holy Spirit inspires us. And I wonder what inspires you. Let's have a think about that in a minute. We're going to do that by looking at a painting. And we need to go over to my prayer space to find the painting. So let's go. So here we are back in my prayer corner. And uh, you might remember that I showed you some of the things in my prayer prayer space um, a few weeks ago. I thought I would uh, I'd tell you about um, some of the postcards that I've got here and some of the paintings. You can see there's a few more things been added. There's a little prayer card for my friend Andrew. Hi Andrew, who's getting ordained soon. But I thought I would tell you about some of these pictures. Now this postcard, I'm going to extract it from... The window. This is a painting by an artist called Marc Chagall. Um, it's not in very good focus. I'm going to show you a better copy of it in a minute. There we go. Um, and I must have picked it up somewhere. Let's see, is there anything on the back? No, it's in the Tate Gallery in, in London. Um, maybe I picked it up when I went to visit the Tate Gallery. I don't know. But anyway, I always liked it. Um, and uh, it's called The Poet Reclining. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about it, because I think it has something that might speak to us about Pentecost. So let's go back over here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I want to talk to you a little bit today about Pentecost, and about inspiration. And I'll show you the painting in a moment. But let me read to you a little bit from the Book of Acts first, because this is the story, very famous story that we tell at Pentecost. So where we're, where we're at in the Bible story, Jesus has um, been crucified. He's been risen from the dead. Amazing miracle. And then he ascends into heaven to be with his father. And the disciples, with Jesus, as it were, gone, he, they don't really know what to do. And they're, they're waiting in this upper room somewhere. And they, they don't really know what to do. Um, but then all of a sudden, into that sort of fearful place and place of uncertainty comes the Holy Spirit uh, and inspires them. And uh, it's amazing what happens. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So what happens uh, then is that there are um, various different people who are hanging around um, outside the house and they hear all this noise going on. And uh, they also hear the disciples starting to speak. And the disciples speak in uh, different languages that they didn't know. Um, and all the people start to hear the good news about Jesus in their own language. Amazing. And then Peter, who you may remember, Peter is one of Jesus' closest disciples. Peter um, stands up and gives this amazing speech where he tells the whole story um, of Jesus. And, uh, and encourages the people to put their faith in him. And uh, when the, the, the people who are listening to them speak, um, uh, they say this, it says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, it says. So it really moved them, right? Um, and they said to Peter and the other disciples, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that gift that the disciples got, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, God himself in spirit form, Peter says that if you repent and 
be baptised and believe in Jesus, you'll receive that spirit too. And that's wonderful. Now, what? how can we understand the Holy Spirit? It's very difficult to think of tongues of fire and wind blowing and strange languages and things. That's difficult to get our heads around. But I think we can get that, our heads around the idea of inspiration. Now think for a minute, what does inspiration mean? Well, think of the word spirit, then think of the word inspire. It sounds kind of similar, doesn't it? Spirit, inspire. Well, they come from the same word. And really what they mean is breath, actually. Funny thing, they mean breath. So in Bible language, breath is the breath of life. And uh, the spirit is the spirit of life. So God gives us life by his spirit and we have breath. As long as we can breathe, we're alive. Now, can you see your breath? Not usually. Maybe if I take my specs off and if I breathe on my glasses, you might be able to see the effect of my breath there. And if I put my specs on, uh, I can't see very well until they clear. We can usually see our breath. We can see the effect of it though, can't we? And it's like that with the Holy Spirit. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can see the effect of the Holy Spirit. And what the Spirit does is he inspires us. He breathes new life into us, especially new creativity. And that's where my wonderful artist Mark Chagall comes in. I want to talk to you a bit about this painting and what it means to me. So I'll put the painting up on the screen now so you can see it better and I'll look at this postcard. So this painting is called The Poet Reclining and Mark Chagall painted it in 1915. Now I think it's a very peaceful uh, painting. We've got the poet here, whoever he is, Maybe he's the artist, is also a poet, we don't know. But anyway, we've got this poet lying down. Reclining means lying down. And he's in his garden. He's out the back of his house, it looks like. Um, and there's a, a, looks like a little pig. And there's a horse, too, in this, or maybe a sheep, I don't know. But anyway, there's a, there's a, I think it's a pig. And there's a, certainly a horse uh, in this uh, field in his garden. Um, and it's very peaceful scene. I love the green of that grass. It's so rich and green. It's like all the best grasses you've ever seen. And I love the colour of the sky too. I wonder what time of day you think this is in this painting. I think it's late in the afternoon or perhaps on a summer's evening um, when uh, the sun is really going down and it's almost night time. Because we've got that beautiful purple sky. Isn't that amazing? There's still patches of blue. But mostly it's this wonderful rich purple colour. It's almost like a bruise. It's so beautiful. And the trees there as well. The trees are green. But they're, it's late I think in the day. And so the trees are almost black. They're almost silhouettes. So there's wonderful, wonderful use of colour in this painting. And then we've got the poet. Who is right up in the front of the painting. It's quite strange isn't it? The way Chagall's painted it. And he's uh, got his head on what looks like a table. Um, and I love the fact that his hat has just fallen off. Um, his sun hat. And also I love the fact that he's not wearing any socks. He's only got shoes on. Fair enough. And he's lying there, kind of uh, with his hands across, across his chest. Across his heart, maybe. And he looks kind of sad, I think. Very serious, anyway. And it strikes me as I look at him now that he almost looks like he might, he looks almost like a dead body, doesn't he? And I wonder what Chagall's saying through that. It's interesting this painting was painted in 1915 during the First World War. And Chagall was someone who knew a lot of pain and a lot of suffering in his life. And um, particularly as a Jewish artist. But we know, don't we, that this poet is not dead. He's alive. He's only reclining, he's only lying down, and he's waiting, I think, for inspiration. He's being still. He's waiting to be inspired, to have the new breath of creativity put into him, so that he can write a poem, I think. So I love this uh, painting very much. It's just a very beautiful, peaceful painting. But why have I put it in my prayer corner, I hear you ask? Why have you put it in your prayer corner, Martin? Well, I'll tell you. 
it's because I too am someone who needs to be inspired. I love to create things. I love to create things with words, poems and uh, sermons. And I also love to create music. And I wish I could paint like Marc Chagall. He paints in this wonderfully imaginative way, doesn't he? Um, this beautiful colour and beautiful ideas. Um, I wish I could do that, but uh, I love to create uh, and I love to be inspired. And so I have this in my prayer corner because it reminds me that the Holy Spirit who inspired those disciples on Pentecost all those years ago still inspires people today. The Holy Spirit still inspires poets and artists and musicians and songwriters and playwrights and, and everyone who creates things. He still inspires us to make beautiful things in the world, things that uh, help people to grow closer to God. So that's why I have him in my prayer corner. So I want to close with a question for you guys now. I wonder what inspires you? Do you look at beautiful paintings? Do you read uh, wonderful poems? Do you watch uh, creative films? What inspires you or who inspires you? Who makes you want to live your best life? And I wonder what you've been creating during lockdown. Have you been inspired to create something beautiful? Well, good for you, because I think that's the spirit at work in you, inspiring you, breathing life and ideas and inspiration into you. And I pray today that you would keep being inspired and keep creating and keep lying down in your garden if that's what you need to get inspired. Do whatever it takes, because the world is a more beautiful place and a better place when the Holy Spirit inspires us. So God bless you today.